This week's video is a little bit different. We're doing some Aristea this week, and Aristea is a fun sports skirmish game set in the future of Infinity. And I'm a little bit new to the game. Uh, it's it's a bit fun. I've played a played a couple of demo games, and I've bought a few minis, so I need to get some more of them painted up. Uh, this one here is Maximus. He's from the starter box, and I've got him in plastic. We're gonna go with traditional colors for Maximus, his normal box art, and that involves a lot of blues, oranges, and whites. So we're gonna start off with a little airbrush work using some dark blue from Monument Pro Acryl. All right, and we're gonna be doing these blues through an airbrush, so if you have an airbrush and you're following along, that's where we're gonna start. So let's speed it up. down we're going to move up to a blue tone this is the nice mid-range blue that pro acryl provides and we're going to focus this blue in more of the areas where we think light is going to be directly hitting it and a little bit to the sides of that so as we have an all over tone with dark blue this blue is going to be a bit more focused Airbrush highlight. This is sky blue, also from Pro Acryl. So we've moved through dark blue, blue, and sky blue, all from the Pro Acryl line. It's a nice basic workup of blue, and basically what we're getting here is value overall. So you'll notice that I'm hitting certain edges with the airbrush to get a very distinct modulated look. Uh, this is something you can practice by quote unquote shooting the tangent, which means shooting the airbrush spray over the edge of a mini and using that uneven texture to get certain highlights like this. It's kind of masking the mini with itself. You can also use a thumb or a finger or a piece of plastic or paper to catch any overspray that might be coming across the model when you do so. But you can see that most of the time I'm kind of spraying off into nowhere. You can see I've gathered a little bit on my glove. That's the result of me kind of blocking and testing spray.
mixed in all the blue that we want. I'm actually going to mix in a little bit of titanium white. There's going to be just a smidge of that sky blue left in this white, but we're going to hit some of the very high points of the mini here and really bump up that modulation. It's kind of a classic cyberpunk thing to go very modulated, very clean, very crisp. So that's what we're going for here. Maximus is perfection. So I go back and hit this with a little bit of the dark and mid-tones here to make sure that the highlighting that we did with the sky blue and the titanium white isn't too oversaturated here. Uh, one of the things that I did here with the mid-tone is just kind of go in and unfuzz everything and give it just a general kind of glaze all over the mini to bring it down just a notch. So we went super high and then we knocked it right back down. It's time to move on to some of the details. We're going to start off with Maximus' skin. I'm going to use dark highlight, tan shadow, tan skin, and tan highlight to work up his face. And I'm also going to start his hair by working in dark shadow into his hair as well. going to break out some dark warm gray from Pro Acryl at this point and all of the kind of interconnecting bits here on Maximus we're gonna, we're gonna put into dark warm gray and then we're actually gonna work that around a little bit so it'll look a little odd right now it'll look a little light but we're gonna we're gonna keep working that
On top of that, we're going to work on his shield as well. There's a little bit of raised lettering on the shield, so I'm going to go ahead and base that in with some dark warm gray. We're going to be using a lot of this dark warm gray as we go, but this is going to be one part that actually has a little bit of definition, so I'm going to make sure to get down around the edges because we're going to work this up a little bit. Next color that we're going to start working into Maximus here is going to be Burnt Orange, also from Pro Acryl. Burnt Orange is a great base orange color here, and we'll also be using that over some parts with the dark warm gray as well. But it works just as well over the blue. Thinking back to our color theory, we've got contrasting colors, and using contrasting colors as base coats is a good way to get a nice saturated overcoat. It's time to start hitting some of the freehand on this mini. I'm going to break out some of my Ulthwin Gray. And I'm going to use this alongside our Burnt Orange to do a little bit of freehand striping here. So the outside stripes are going to be a very small amount of Ulthwin Gray. So I'm going to lay down the Ulthwin Gray after I've laid down a very small amount of Burnt Orange. And then I'll kind of work that back and forth a little bit, making sure that the Ulthwin Gray is a very thin stripe. Try to get it as straight as possible. You'll notice a little bit of muck up here, not perfect. And then fill in the burnt orange to kind of fill out the middle so I get a nice even middle as well. You'll notice that I've gone over dark warm gray here. That makes a great base tone for both the burnt orange and the Ulthwin gray.
here using some of those lighter skin tones and the tan flesh triad from Reaper. And I'm also bringing a little bit of that into the hair as well, but not too much right now. Madness continues here. I've got a lot of freehand to do. There's a lot of striping on Maximus. These orange stripes and white borders are running down his front on either side, down one of his legs and down one of his arms, as well as on his shield. So we've got a lot of work to do here. I'm gonna I'm gonna block in part of it right now just to make sure that it looks like what I want it to look like. And then I'm gonna work on more of it later. This is a big part of the model, so this probably took the majority of the time on this project. You'll notice that it looks pretty mucky. I kind of go back and forth. I'm using burnt orange here and Ulthwin gray over that dark warm gray. And uh, if it's a little messed up, I kind of go back and forth a little bit. I use the dark or the burnt orange to cover up any of the Ulthwin gray, and I use the Ulthwin gray to cover up the dark warm gray. <laughs> start using some of that Ulthwin gray and I'm gonna mix it in with the dark warm gray here to get a bit of a non-metallic effect along the max lettering here so I'm using the edges to help me out a little bit and we're not going for anything too specularly highlighted but we mostly want to just grab the upper edges here we'll work this back and forth until we like where it's at
Great, we're looking pretty good at this point. I'm going to take some of this transparent black, mix it with a little bit of Lamy and medium, and just a smidge of water. And then we're going to apply this over all of the areas that we based in with dark warm gray to stain and tint them just a little bit. some of that transparent brown out and glaze in his hair. We're gonna make it nice and dark. So even though his hair and his skin started at the same point, we're going completely different directions here. And this is where things get fun. So, Maximus's shield has a lot of freehand decoration on it. There are some lines that kind of follow some of the topography of the model, but there's some that's just straight up freehand. So, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and line in some of the panels here using some of my leftover transparent black. Then once we've got that in place, I'm going to use some of our dark warm gray to go ahead and base in the lining.
nice thick lines with that dark warm gray also on his leg here and we're going to use that as a base coat for both the burnt orange and the Ulthwin gray that we used to line it just like we did on the shoulder So at this point we're going back to our burnt orange and we're going over some of the areas that we have with the dark warm gray with that burnt orange and we're going to keep building that up nice thin layers orange is kind of a tough color and a tough pigment to work with so setting it up properly is important uh, burnt orange here is a decent way to set it up you could also start with something like a deep red or some sort of orange uh, to help set that up but it's really up to you. We're using the gray here for consistency since it makes a nice way to block out all of our design. And we're just gonna keep going from here. We're gonna build that up slowly. So you notice that I've sped up the video just a little bit more to get through this. There's a lot of work here and it's very tedious. Take your time, use a nice sharp brush, load your brush uh, appropriately. Don't try to glob on too much paint or anything like that and then just do what you gotta do to make sure that those lines get even. Uh, block out the outsides first, then fill in the middle and straighten them up. At this point too, once we've got the orange built up, we're also gonna start add adding a little bit of orange 
from Pro Acryl, not to be confused with Burnt Orange that we've been using up until this point. And a little bit of that Burnt Orange will go a long way into shading the orange just a little bit for some, uh, for some lighting here. As well, we're going to bring in the Ulthwin Gray here and do a bit of edge highlighting. I'm not entirely happy with how this turned out, but it's the best that I could do, and I definitely worked this back and forth a bit, so you'll probably see a little bit of repeat work. That Ulthwin Gray is also going to be what we use to fill in the inner work that we blocked out before on that kind of swirly design in the middle.
extra bits that are orange. We're going to highlight those out with a little bit of our orange that we had from before. And we're going to mix in a little bit of Flash Gets Yellow here too for very high highlight. So at this point, I'm doing, well, doing the best part of any model, match highlighting. Terrastea, Cyberpunks, we're going to do some nice clean edges. We're going to use Sky Blue, Ulthwin Gray, and Titanium White to get those edges and pop those highlights out at the corners. This is going to take some time and some patience. Make sure you take your time, make it nice and thin, nice and light. And uh, it's better to make multiple passes than get the line in on the first pass. And remember to blend those edges in as well. A little bit of blue, a little bit of gray, a little bit of white. Pop the edges, pop the corners, and anything towards where your light source you imagine is coming from. This is definitely one of the more tedious steps in any paint process, especially with as many armor panels and hard edges as Maximus has here. Just be patient, and uh, hopefully this isn't too boring.
right, I'm going to use a little bit of tan skin on the hair, a little bit of flash gets yellow, and a little bit of that original dark skin to kind of work this hair back and forth, and then hit it with just a smidge of that transparent brown that we have left over from before. This is going to give us a nice little bit of highlight here along Maximus's part. All right, and at this point, we're basically done with Maximus. Let's base him up. And now he has a base. I've gone for a nice basic base with a quick color and a line around it just to make sure that he's visible on the Aristea field. And that is Maximus. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to be back next week with another mini. I'll see you on Twitch on the weekend and paint some minis.